Welcome. Good evening. Good morning. Good afternoon. All depends whether you're watching live and where you're watching live. Why does my nose start to itch? I don't plan to lie. I promise. It's a funny thing, you know. You get ready to go live and your nose starts to itch. <laughs> um, but, of course, there's the replay crowd, too. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Worldwide Ramblings, a gathering from various parts of the world. And Richard Lyon from Palm Beach, Florida is first. Yeah. How are you, Richard? Haven't gotten to talk to you this week. Um, and so much has been going on. Carrie Doxon. You may be new. Do I recognize that last name? I don't know. We've had a carry or two. Are you Carrie Ann by the Hollies? Hello from Kansas. Welcome, welcome. I'm glad you're here. Uh, we were on earlier uh, this afternoon. I did a live promo for this uh, broadcast, Worldwide Ramblings. Pop on to pop off, we call it, when we just come on out of the blue. That's why you have to have your notification bell on so you know that we're on. Uh, subscribe like and hit the notification bell and we got some new people including someone from south africa and a few others that um we had not heard from before that i know of that i can remember jimmy maybe we're back that's right it was just a few hours ago i went and had some dinner watched uh, some of uh, john scott do the news and um Something else I watched for a while. It might have been, how's this for uh, uh, um, an admission? It might have been me. I might have watched some of what we did this afternoon. Barbara Kendall, hi. How are you? Uh, Kay from K Jewelers is here. Hi, Jack from Kentucky. And uh, Richard says, nice shirt. Looks, uh, hi, Jack, and everyone from Quebec says uh, Stefan, but Richard says, nice shirt. Looks like you are from Florida. <laughs> this was the, uh, I can't believe how itchy my nose is all of a sudden. Uh, this is the shirt that I wore Saturday night. I was wearing it one week ago in the nightclub over at Villa Roma. And at this time, we were watching a comedian known as Jeff Morris do his uh, one hour set. And he's been doing this for quite a while. Uh, he kind of looks like Anderson Cooper, especially when he was younger. Some of the material he did towards the end of our show I have seen on YouTube. You can easily find Jeff uh, Norris. He's a veteran. He's done his fair of, you know, TV shows and what have you. And uh, has done a lot of cruise ships. Some of his stuff was funny, you know, some of it wasn't. But uh, comedy is in the ears of the beholder uh brenda noyce is here and uh thank you Kay. she loves the shirt uh but this is what i wore saturday night hard to believe it was a week ago time really flies you know and um woodsley summercraft is here that would be rob right if i got that right ted richards Ted Richards, I just heard from you in an email. Uh, hello, everyone from Vermont. Yeah. And uh, Marty Greco. Hello, Jack, from Oklahoma. I've known a few Grecos in this neck of the woods. Here's someone new, I think. Hunter Elgin. Hi, Jack. Where are you from, Hunter? Andra... I've never tried to pronounce your second name, have I? But cool. <laughs> Hi, Jack and all. If there's a way to mispronounce it, I'll always find it. Hello, Vera. Hello, Jack from Austin, Texas. Yes, yes, yes. Bus Lady is here from uh, Mount Rushmore. Uh, uh, you're, you're right there with the presidents. Hello from the Mount uh, Rushmore Stair. Okay. Uh, Jeanette is here. Hi, everybody. Craig Oliver. Hello. 
Where are you from, Craig? You may have told me before, but you know, I don't even remember what I had for breakfast this morning. I know what I had, nothing. <laughs> Just rushed right out and went to the, uh, went to the uh, flea market. Karen didn't find what she was looking for there. We weren't out too long today. Yes, hit the like button, says Kay. Please do. Uh, we have 12 likes, 61 watching right now. So please hit the like if you like it. It's kind of early to like it, though. If you, You're not sure if you like it. Maybe it's awful, you know. I'm never sure myself. Some of the best shows are the least planned. So if that's true, this will be one of the best shows. <laughs> I have notes, but, you know, it's not one of my heavily uh, booked research shows, to be honest with you. Jane Justice. Hello, Jack. Glad to see you back on Saturday night. Glad you had a good time. That's right. I wasn't on Saturday night, and I won't be on next Saturday night because it's back to Jimmy Stir this time in Wilkesbury at Janati's in downtown Wilkesbury, I'm told, uh, for another polka show with the Stanky Brothers, John and um, uh, the other guy. <laughs> John and Joe, they're two separate bands, but they're brothers. Carmen uh, Sylvia. Hi, Carmen. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Gail George is here. And Nancy and Terry, I want to say Whitmore. So I guess I will. <laughs> hey, from Maine, my couple from Maine. Had another gentleman from Maine. I did not recognize the... Uh, the uh, town or city he was in. Maybe he'll come on tonight because I have forgotten it. It wasn't an easy name to remember. Janet Williams, hijacking everyone from Jan and Al in New Mexico. Blessings. So how far are you from Tucumcari, New Mexico, huh? That's the only place I, well, no, I remember Albuquerque. Why would I say that? I saw those beautiful red rocks, you know? So I've seen those two places. That's what, uh, and that was all on a Greyhound bus. Back in my adventurous days in the 70s, I suppose into the early 80s, so uh, when I had California fever. But really, that was all the 70s because in 1979, I decided to go out there again after my first radio job here in upstate New York, western New York. And I said, I'm going to stay a year this time. And I'm at the end of that year, I'll make a decision. Either I'm going to stay here indefinitely or I will have enough. I will have uh, gotten that out of my system. I got it out of my system. <laughs> Never felt at home in Hollywood, California, but it was interesting. I'm not going to tell you that. It wasn't. It was interesting, but I had enough. Returned in 1998 with my children and my first the wife, and we had a good time with Bonnie, God rest her soul, and John Leopoldo and their children. I hate it when someone doesn't get that uh, retirement, you know, when they die before they even get to 60 years old. I, it just seems so unfair. I blog, therefore I am. Well, of course, from Cincinnati, WKRP in Cincinnati, Bactavia, Batavia. Okay. <laughs> See, I'm doing this without my best glasses. Here, Oklahoma, Craig Oliver. So we have two from Oklahoma, do we? Heather is here, but she's retracted her message. Um, yes, I always appreciate the likes because um, I think it helps more people see us. Patrick Phyllis is here. Hello, Jack and everyone. Um, I wish this was bigger, bigger print. I know you could type in... Um, caps, but I'm not asking you to do that. Patrick Phyllis, hello, Jack and everyone. Um, and uh, Gail says, reminds us she's from Tennessee. She's from Tennessee. Carmen uh, Sylvia says she was in L.A. in the 80s. I'm sure you were singing out uh, on the West Coast. Yeah, I was right there uh, off of Hollywood Boulevard for a year, the corner of uh, Wilcox and Yucca, one block off Hollywood Boulevard. Um, there was a hot dog restaurant uh, on the way up 
to my apartment, and it was called Big Weenies Are Better, a hot dog restaurant. And uh, the logo was a hot dog with a woman wearing a negligee clutching it. I do not make this up. I bet you that's long gone. Cheryl Larson is here. Um, have a cousin who lives in Las Cruces, New Mexico. Again, if there's a way to mispronounce it, I'll find it. How are you doing, Rhonda Ledbetter? Um, hope you're feeling better. Yeah, I'm not 100%, but I'm feeling better. This morning, my blood pressure was running a little high, and I took it several times. Um, I actually got a call from our local agency that monitors my blood pressure, and um, they wanted to know how I was feeling. And I... Uh, Gave me some tips, told me to hydrate good. And when I took my blood pressure the next time, it was much better. It was much better. So I'm keeping a watch on that. Hello, Miss Pam Purdy. How are you? Always makes me think of that character that did one episode of the Andy Griffith Show. She was a lovely old lady who is a professional thief. <laughs> yes, she had a gang. They called her Ma. Ma Purdy. <laughs> I do remember that episode for some reason. Um and uh debbie pop i think you're new where are you from debbie hijack i've been watching for a couple of months now and really enjoy it i appreciate that watch the replays mostly but try to catch you live i'm from west virginia yes joe mansion country i don't know how how much longer it'll be joe mansion country but it is now he's not running for re-election um, he's not running for presidency. So what's next for Joe Manchin? He's in his early seventies. Now he made some mistakes there and, uh, believed, uh, Joe Biden. And when you believe Joe Biden, you're going to end up with, uh, egg on your face and you're going to make the people in your state very upset. If it's a semi-conservative state, if not a totally conservative state, I guess it's, uh, somewhere in the middle. Right. And, um, The wife says, hi. Hi, Vivian. How are you? See, I remembered. I'm not totally hopeless, just a semi-hopeless, you know. Um, you can check out Carmen's music right here on YouTube. She has a channel, and she posts uh, frequently. Um, yeah, Vivian, even Jimmy maybe is wishing you a good evening there. So we had a lively time when we came on earlier. Um, we had some new people. Um, I think I'll be doing a little bit more live than usual. If you're tired of me, don't don't worry. Don't you don't have to come on. I won't uh, take attendance. But uh, coming on at different time slots uh, kind of builds the audience and gets new people. And um, you know uh, that's always good. You're always trying to build your channel. Even those uh, retired teachers that cook in their kitchen are always, uh, you know, they're, they're doing better than me. They, they, and their, their recipes are so high fat. <laughs> and they're not making vegan dishes, you know what I'm saying? They're making those kind of uh, desserts that you just can't get enough of. But then you have to get enough of because you realize that uh, your uh, blood sugar is in serious trouble. Yes, 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 Carmen. So where are you from, Debbie Pop, did I ask? Uh, it's a cool name. Yeah, I'm glad that uh, the people in West Virginia, right, are, uh, you already told me that, didn't you, uh, are smart enough, if, if I'm not confusing two people, which is possible, uh, that uh, it, it's not a matter of like. You know, I had someone uh, say in the uh, live stream, when, what I was doing was a pop on to pop off to promote this, to promote the big show, <laughs> Worldwide Ramblings. And uh, she said, uh, can we uh, can we uh, talk about things without belittling people? I understand how you could think that uh, when we talk harshly about the president of the United States, governors, senators, congressmen that we're belittling, but... Um, that's not the intent. Um, we are called to pray for the president of the United States, even when it seems that he's, uh, in three years done everything he can to destroy this country. 
Um, so it's going to be harsh. It's going to be harsh because we're fighting to save America. We're fighting to uh, to hold on to uh, a country that we love, that for the Constitution not to be shredded. So this is no time for a light approach because they are not going to do that. Not that I'm saying become like the enemy, but I'm saying be aware of the wiles of the enemy, the schemes, the plans, and pray that God, the Holy Spirit, uh, guide you in the best way to handle that. Um, someone said in the, uh, the uh, email this week, and we'll talk a little bit about emails, um, that uh, they believe the 2020 election was stolen. While, you know, it's uh, it's something that a lot of people say. I don't say that. I say that we're definite shenanigans. We've seen some of those things. People that I respect as journalists, because most of the uh, journalists on CNN, I should say the anchors and stuff, not, not the field reporters. Uh, MSNBC, NBC is now a lost cause. Lester uh, Holt should... Uh, should uh, get out of there because that form of journalism that he comes from is no longer practiced at NBC. Um, so uh, when we talk about uh, exactly what's going on in our country, and I talk about a new feature that we're starting uh, for uh, the Saturday version of Worldwide Ramblings, this week's uh, nincompoop, which is a fool, <laughs> um, it may seem like that is uh, name calling and what have you, but it's very important to make the point that we have a dastardly, uh, soulless, godless, um, uh, power hungry uh, uh, liars that are influencing this country and steering it into a nosedive. And even they don't know how bad it's going to be. Hi, uh, let's see here. So, uh, yeah, Trump 24, Nancy and Terry, because if not, you know, as uh, Governor DeSantis said, we're not going to get a mulligan. This this could be it. We're, we're going to have to ride the uh, the elevator down to the sub-basement. And that, that'll be very sad. At least Trump can stop the bleeding a little bit for four years. But they will use every tool in the toolbox Everything from ballot harvesting, um, uh, remote ballot stuffing, um, possibly incorrect counting. Um, you know, it wasn't the Dominion voting machines. It was human beings at work to, uh, to uh, try to affect the outcome. In 2016... Donald Trump uh, won the presidency, and it was immediately called um, uh, an invalid uh, election to office, you know. Um, the very next day, uh, was it the Daily News or the New York Times that said impeachment, uh, impeachment uh, inquiry to begin? Um, these, these people are really a special form of evil. And they're doing it to their own country. And if they have children, they're setting up a situation where their 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 kids will live in a bankrupt, broke, socialist slash their form of communism system that um, that will hurt their children. So these people are not very smart. They're not very smart. A lot of the people, you know, that you see in the squad and what have you, they don't even have children. Uh, or if they do have children, like uh, Omar's daughter got to detained uh, for a while. You might as well just call it detained for everyone because they're out before you know it. They realize there's really no consequences to what they're doing. And it's so it's so horrible. It's so horrible. So uh, we will do that. Um, and there's so many choices that we could make for nincompoop of the week. <laughs> but we'll... Uh, We'll narrow it down to one that I thought was especially um, egregious, egregious. Hello, Steve Bennett. Where are you from? Hi, welcome to Worldwide Ramblings. I'm very glad you're here. Um, Karen Gagnon says, hi, Jack and Karen. Hope you are feeling better soon. Yeah, I, um, 
I think it all goes back to me uh, smoking a stogie that I thought I could get away with, and it seemed, it seemed to trigger something, almost giving me a form of bronchitis again with a little bit of mucus and stuff. But uh, for the most part, you know, my temperature's fine and everything, and hopefully we'll be... Uh, Shell is here and outside of Toronto. Um, I have been to Toronto once or twice, I guess. Any Bob Joyce news? We're going to talk just a little bit about that. Yeah, I still have the cough from time to time, but it's not too persistent. Bobby Anthony Esposito is here. Good evening from, uh, oh, I thought he said from Florida. Good evening, friends. Good evening. And um, Anne, first time posting. Well, welcome, welcome, welcome to Worldwide Ramblings, Anne. Close enough to drive to uh, Bentonville, huh? Or Benton, but it would be a long drive. Not as long as it would be for me there, Anne, I bet. Uh, for me, it would be <laughs> day and a half, something like that. You know, I mean, I can't do it in one day. Um, but Benton, Arkansas is uh, is a real, it's not a hop, skip, and a jump, you know. It's, it's, a, it's a long distance. And if I did it in August, you know, it's going to be so obnoxiously hot. Or maybe not. I don't want uh, Gene Ho to think I'm trying to discouraged uh, people um neo 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 is here as well and um i think i've gotten just about everybody um bob joyce news well i do have a few comments in the uh the email. That's what we're talking about tonight. If I have something strong, I'll be honest with you. I I uh, I usually serve it for uh, save it for a pre-recorded video because I may be really bad at math, but not that bad. <laughs> not that bad. Uh, let's see uh, the verdict um, coming up to not far from one hundred and fifty thousand views. I've never had a live show that got 150,000 views. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, um, but um, this is really your chance to share your topics. Do you have Bob Joyce questions? Do you have comments that you want to make? Just be respectful. That's all we ask, you know, be respectful. So while uh, people don't feel offended and what have you, we can all agree to disagree on that. I don't really mind. I don't care. You know, if uh, that's life, people are going to disagree with you. There are people out there that would look me in the eye and tell me Joe Biden has been a fine president. And what are you going to say to that? You know, well, you'll, you'll never convince that person. I'm especially upset when someone that's uh, like my friend from the diner who I love, uh, he, he, he thinks this is 1968 and it's Nixon versus Humphrey, Democrats versus Republicans. Um it's always about, well, what would Trump do? Are they going to put Trump in jail? Are they going to do, you know, uh, uh, is Trump going to get away with it? Get away with what? If we're talking about the, the current thing in New York, at best, uh, it was a misdemeanor, uh, which his accountant did. And, you know, Trump can't watch everything. Um, no big deal. Now, if uh, Trump goes on and says, well, he never had anything to do, and I think maybe the agreement that Stormy agreed to, um, she said that she never had sexual relations with Donald Trump, but then, of course, she said a million times she did. Um, people uh, work out agreements all the time, and it's so funny how often that people that are so into the lifestyle and I'm thinking now to uh, one of the, the women that got a nice settlement, who's like in, uh, 40 now or something, got a nice s settlement concerning her activity on Epstein Island. And you see her smiling, and she's she's 17. She looks like she could easily be 18, 19. She's not 14, you know what I'm saying? Any of that kind of stuff, and you're asking, you're digging your own grave. Um, but... Uh, 
she was a hundred percent from what we can see of the picture of her with Prince uh, William thrilled to be there. And, uh, you know, was looking for a payday and the Prince uh, quickly gave her one and she kind of shut her mouth. I mean, there's always going to be a non-disclosure agreement, but they can find subtle ways and then they can go after other people, uh, like, um, Alan Dershowitz, and he spent a lot of money defending himself, a lot of money defending himself. So, uh, everybody casting stones and what have you. Um, uh, but, um, nobody is in love with Trump, Trump, because they believe he's a choir boy. They they're in love with Trump because they saw how things were when he was in office, no wars, great economy, gas, and some, uh, states like South Carolina, that's always the one you go to a uh, dollar 80 a gallon, as opposed to three eighty a gallon. Now, what is gas in California right now? Somebody tell me, we usually have people from California, uh, that, uh, that at least one or two from Southern California, usually I've ever gotten anyone from San Francisco, but if Dr. Michael Savage is watching me right now from San Francisco, I'd love to, uh, I'd love to hear from you. Um, I, I am a subscriber to Dr. Savage and watch him. You know, he's very interesting. And, he, you know, his whole radio career, if he had been Mr. Nice Guy all the time and minced his words, he would have never become the legend that, that he is. When he uh, has a point to make, he makes it very clearly. <laughs> makes it very clearly. So, um, um, you know, I... Uh, it's not, I hate to say this, it's an honest statement, but it's not good radio to be Mr. Rogers, you know, uh, and he was such a lovely, wonderful man. He's dealing with children and, and he's talking about how parents should treat their children and how children should obey their parents and what have you, all good stuff. But, uh, you know, uh, Rush Limbaugh, if he would have come on and been a mild mannered, uh, and said, oh, well, we... We, we feel that the Republicans are just a better party. No, no. He became a legend by really uh, turning it on, you know, calling uh, uh, women that, uh, that uh, were, uh, were nasty and uh, hated everything about America feminazis. It was terms like that that, be, that made him a legend, you know, that made him a legend. Um Bob Joyce sounds uh, too much like Elvis when singing. I have uh, met a lot of Elvis singers, but not one that uh, is close to his voice like Bob Joyce. And you know, Carmen, where we are now, if we're really going to be honest, is we're up to five or six dozen coincidences. And, you know, I always get that person who comes on and says, uh, you know, often in the replay or the, you know, I, I do a pre-recorded video and someone comes on and makes the comments. He doesn't look like him and he doesn't sound like him. And I say right there, Elvis protector, Elvis protector, or you're just, you just don't have the gift of discernment. You just don't have the gift of discernment. I'm sorry, but a small town pastor from Benton, Arkansas, doesn't go to Mar-a-Lago. He certainly doesn't go to George Klein's funeral in Memphis, Tennessee. And um, there are so many other places that uh, it seems that he's been, including Graceland. So, uh, you know, uh, what can I say? If you're right and he's not Elvis and he's not the love child son of Elvis, I have a video on that, too. I cover that base just in case. <laughs> if he's not, this is the greatest uh, conglomeration. I, I, people say, don't use the word coincidences. If you're a Christian, there's no such thing as coincidences. And I agree with you. I agree with you. Uh, so I'll say, when I say coincidences, I often use it in quotes. You know, this is the greatest uh, a group of coincidence that has ever existed in any entertainment story. People talk about JFK. They talk about Jim Morrison. They talk about even Princess Diana. Uh, they they talk about uh, 
uh, any number of people, M Michael Jackson, that they like, uh, that has left us and they try to say they faked their death too. You know, there's that conspiracy crowd. I'm not making fun of you or anything. I'm just saying you come up with five, six dozen coincidences on why Michael Jackson is still alive. Not things that you think or heard, but something with a little more foundation. Now, sometimes I do do, I do do think and heard. But I do more stuff where, you know, we, we try to back it up with some kind of a foundation. I'm not a, um, uh, uh, a uh, veins and scars and mannerisms type guy. I had someone who, uh, who's been studying this, and they also gave me some other information. I will give you that right now. Um, but they were kind of upset with me for not having an appetite for it. I'm not the guy. You don't go to the proctologist and say, I'm having trouble with my left eye. You know what I'm saying? I'm not the guy. I'm not the guy to do the veins and scars and, and all that. And yes, he had some uh, work on his nose to maybe change his appearance a little bit or whatever. I'm just not the guy. Uh, I wouldn't do it well, and I don't do that much roll-in. I can have Andy come up and help me when I need roll-in, but I don't want to uh, abuse his uh He's working on his own computer right now that's down. So, you know, I, I can only use so much of Andy, and I, I, I pay him sometimes when, when I think he's doing more than just a little something, something. Um, but I don't have I don't have what some people have, which is great editing skills, or I have, like, you know, the big uh, boys and the Candace Owens have where they have a staff of people behind them, like Tucker. Tucker brought most of his Fox crew over to either Maine or Florida to work with him. You know, he could do that. He's rich, you know, and he started the, the TCN, the Tucker Carlson Network. I, it's just me. And then occasionally Andy helping me out. So I, I'm just not attracted to the veins and the scars. Uh, I started that Elvis series where we looked at the beginning uh, using some of the Bill Bixby video, for example. And then people started uh, sending me in my email like 30 other people that have done the topic. And so what am I going to do? Take their work? You know, it was one thing to use Bill Bixby that was uh, from 1991. But, um, you know, I, I thought, well, I, before I do a second episode of that, I want to feel right about it. So I have to stop giving myself all these dates, all these dates and, uh, you know, um, uh, these emphatic statements. Because as much as I've tried to back away from the Bob Joyce topic, it is your favorite topic. And um, it is, um, you know, it's either this or lights out. I really appreciate it when people let me do other stuff and respond to it. Um, but uh, I know what the magic words are after all these years. I know what got me monetized. I know what got me a live audience. And I'm so happy when people talk about other things because I certainly, when the world is on fire and you have a, a man leading the country that is leading it into the sewer, we need to talk about that too. Uh, like uh, Dora the Explorer. Mora Dora? <laughs> I like that. And hello, Scott Baker, by the way. Hello. Anastasia. Hello. Hello. How are you, love? I'm trying to sound like Peter Noon right now. I'll be seeing him May 3rd right downtown at the Paramount. Right downtown at the Paramount. Saw him there last year. But he's an engaging chap. And, you know, he's like 76 years old now. And I can't have him come to town and not see him again. I didn't think Karen would want to go again. I thought I'd get off cheap and just, uh, you know, sit in the balcony and by myself. But she wants to go again. She enjoyed him as well. So we'll go see Peter Noon on May 3rd. He works so hard, like 200 shows a year. Uh, what about the singer that looks and sounds like a young Michael Jackson? I just have no interest, Neil. That would be for your channel. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not interested in that. If he's talented, wonderful. Nobody will deny you is one of the greatest pop songs I've ever heard. Um, she's out of my life. His version of that, terrific, terrific. What a vocal performance there. Um,
Bob Joyce was um, Bob Joyce was uh, friends with your uh, with your father, or you mean Elvis was uh, best friends with your father, so he would have attended that. Of course, I have no idea. I have no idea why. I don't know. Um, hi, Jack. Praying you get completely healed from that bronchitis. I may end up getting a antibiotic. Uh, we'll just we'll just see. But you know, it seems to be not that bad. No temperature, what have you. Um, but by Monday or Tuesday, I may have to give in if I feel that. Uh, you know, and don't let them give you the Z pack because. 80%, 90% of the time for me, it doesn't work. And I'm back there in like nine days saying I, I need something stronger. Um, so, um, <sighs> more Dora. Granddaughter said, I want to see more of Dora the Explorer. So I found my name. Well, I like that more Dora. It's very catchy for here. Uh, it's very catchy for here. That's right, Craig Oliver, Peter Noon of Herman's Hermits. Um, he has, a, you know, like three, four guys behind him that are the latest version of Herman's Hermits. Uh, you were here with us this afternoon. I was calling you after bum <laughs> because that R and the N, when they go together, it looks like I was saying uh, Tim after bum. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, Tim, afterburn, afterburn, you got to use that green stuff, right? Uh, what do you call that stuff? I have it. I think I have some left, you know, when you get a sunburn, you put that green gel on and it kind of, uh, starts to heal the skin a little bit. Uh, <laughs> um, does Bob Joyce have an elementary report card to see? If grades are the same, I suppose you think you're being witty, Scott. <laughs> I think you could have done better myself. Sometimes I could do better, right? I understand that. Um, one of the, the people that was uh, doing research um, was saying that there's just nothing on the current Bob Joyce before 2011. There's just nothing. There's just nothing. Um, they said that... Um, they, they spent some money to do some research, and I, I did promise you I would say a couple of the things they said. They also talk about the mannerisms, the scars, the veins, and it's just not something I can present well or really care about. I just never, I don't want to argue whether uh, his uh, broken pinky is really arthritis. I, I don't care. It's just not not my go-to stuff, you know. JJB was big on that. Uh, there are other people that do it much better than me with a lot more rolling video pictures that they write on. You know, very few people put their face on it, you know. But um, what they garnished, first of all, there's this thing that's been out there for a while that I've never said before. So if you want something uh, new, here's a couple of new things. Something about a car crash in 2004. Something about a car crash in 2004, possibly in, uh, involving Robert Wayne Joyce. Robert Wayne Joyce, you know. Um, I have no uh, knowledge of that, but I have heard that from like two different people, you know. But uh, I've also heard from two other very reliable sources that they've seen Robert Wayne Joyce at a household of faith. One at a luncheon and one in the foyer of the church as they were coming in. These are four real people that were shocked because he just wanted to leave and get out of there. Uh, he looked like uh, Bob Joyce's younger brother. And then uh, seconds later, they saw Bob Joyce coming from another door um, uh, in in the church. So, you know, there there is that. But... Um, they found nothing uh, of, of uh, Bob Joyce before 2011. Uh, they were able to find his net worth, uh, and again, this is just their spec. This is just what they said. I have no way to verify this. It seemed like a you know a sincere uh, person. Everybody says the pastor's poor and what have you, and uh, I don't think that's true at all. Uh, they have. Uh, their reporting gave them uh, Bob Joyce having a net worth of $2 million. Uh, that would be $2 million that, you know, that would be 
known. Uh, but when you have rich friends, you know, if you have rich friends, well, they'll help you out. If you used to be somebody they love and adore, they'll help you out. But we speak of possibilities here. I could be wrong about the whole thing. And guess what? Even if I am, it's still, it's still an amazing story that, that, um, Kurt Russell needs to play. Come on. He's not going to be alive forever. I'm not saying Kurt Russell is that old. He played Elvis twice, I believe, and he would make a great Bob Joyce. He's my choice to play Bob Joyce. So let's get her done. Let's get her done. Um, is there going to be a big event this uh, summer or this fall? Um, one of the creators is going with July. I say it's impossible to be July because if it were in July, then August hot springs could not happen. It could not happen, at least uh, not with Bob Joyce participating. He couldn't go there. So I, I'm saying uh, my sources are saying it'll be, you know, September, October. Um, and I can't really say anything about that, that too much. There may be some people saying about it. But, you know, I think uh, 2024, um, you know, there's that distinct possibility something really big will happen and I won't have to try to sit here and defend it anymore. But I don't want to steal his thunder. I don't want to steal his thunder, you know. Um, you know, obviously, when it's a story like this that thousands of people um, love all around the world, international visitors come to this little church in Benton. Are we really supposed to buy the nonsense that there's nothing to this story? Uh, you know, you know that popcorn Sutton, as I call him, the drummer left because, um, he just couldn't stand that people were coming from all over America and international visitors and what have you. And he would, uh, make the, uh, the claim that, uh, you know, that Bob is not Elvis. Some people have him as someone who, who protected Bob. Uh, that's been one of those stories, unconfirmed, just something that was said that he, he uh, you know, those of us who believe that Elvis faked his death in 77 would say he was in the witness protection program. And when you are, there are people that protect you. And there are also people that, that might have been a gardener at Graceland at one point. All that stuff is there. All that stuff is there. But to have this many things to point to, I don't have anything really, and nobody's given me anything convincing on JFK, Michael Jackson, or Jim Morrison, or any of those people. So why don't you look at that, Jack? Because uh, I wouldn't waste my time. you know. But if somebody else wants to do it, um, and... Uh, well, we know that uh, we know uh, Anthony that uh, Bob was at Mar-a-Lago. We have plenty of um, he was there for a brain injury, uh, traumatic brain injury charity. We have plenty of pictures of him with Dr. Ward and with uh, Devin Nunes. I showed those pictures last week. Wasn't it last week? When was I on last? <laughs> I can't even remember. But uh, we know that he was there. I mean, you're not going to say Bob Joyce wasn't at Mar-a-Lago when it's all over the, you know, all over the Internet. And uh, I don't think he's denying it. Right. I don't think he's denying it. Uh, him and Walina, nice pictures there. And uh, this was uh, this was a benefit. This was a benefit. Yes, we don't have him with Trump. It's true. At least I don't have that picture. I don't know where President Trump was, and he's so busy. I'm so glad he did. I didn't get to see it. Hopefully, I'll get to see the replay. I thought this judge was not going to let him do anything during the trial. On the weekend, you can't do a rally, but I guess he was in Wilmington, North Carolina tonight. Anybody see that? Anybody see that? Heather, Bob said... Uh, the prayer on the stage. Yeah, I have that video. I mean, I don't know what we're talking about here. You know, uh, I don't, I, I don't know. And I'm, you know, um, so Anthony is saying he was not in the room. We have, we have the, uh, the, we have it all. We have the documentation there. And, uh, I don't think anybody's disputing that, but so I don't know what to say, you know, I mean, I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to, I'm not going to waste my breath. 
Who knows how much breath I have left? Yeah. Patty with an I, Pastor Bob supports Trump. He sure does. Uh, yes, he said a prayer. Of course he did. Oh, hi, Elizabeth Gilbert. Well, there you are. Trump was there. He had a brief statement with his wife. I, I, I was very, I'm very surprised. I, it would be just, just be better to say that, you know, that, that uh, he was there, but that doesn't mean he's Elvis, you know. Um, so, I don't know uh, where Trump was that night. Does anybody know if uh, Trump even went to that, uh, that function? I know he's so busy, you know. I mean, the man is busy, right? Um, I have a pastor here, Pastor uh, Steve, uh, that I went to his church for many years. He's never been to Mar-a-Lago. He's never shown up at a place that I know of that I thought, what would he be doing there? Uh, there's so many of those with Pastor Bob, though. And, uh, you know, this is a little church in Benton, Arkansas, you know, and here's the pastor himself dressed to the nine, hobdobbing with the the, the multi-millionaires, maybe even billionaires, uh, and uh, it just doesn't happen that way. Uh, the campaign photographer for President Trump goes to his church, goes to his church. Yes, he's in Hot Springs, Arkansas now, but um, why would he pick that one? Um, from an inside source, I got confirmation that famous people go to Household of Faith often. Somebody from the Sweet Inspirations, uh, often. Somebody from the Sweet Inspirations. Uh, G uh, Glenn Harden has been there. Not the guy who's the bass player uh, who looks like Glenn. He's there. He's there too. I don't know if he's still there. Uh, people confuse them, and uh, Glenn is, you know, is uh, he dresses a little better than that guy. <laughs> So, um, um, well, all I can say, Anthony, is I hope, uh, your dad's friend of 35 years becomes the 47th president of the United States. I wish that with all my heart. Um, do you have many people from Tennessee, Jack, on your program in terms of, you mean on the live stream? I've yet to do my first, uh, zoom. Um, I've got to get over that fear of that and do it, but I've got to pick someone that's going to appeal to my core audience. You know, there are people that I could have on and do a fascinating uh, show, but I don't know that that's my audience. As they say on TMZ, the number one rule is know your audience, know your audience. So I don't do a lot of politics and stuff because, um, um, and uh, so we'll be looking for your investigation, Anthony. We'll be looking for it. Um, three Severed Heads. It's been a long time. My favorite serial killer. He was just there for a charity, but you said he wasn't there initially. But you said he wasn't there initially. Um, who wasn't there initially? I've been showing pictures of Bob and Walina. It's a thumbnail for one of my uh, shows. So um, this is recent stuff. You know, I haven't talked to you in a while. Um, so once again, Bobby, you are going to become the, uh, <laughs> you're going to, let's see how, oh, it, it, it's good for views uh, there, Anthony. <laughs> 146, well, welcome. Please hit the like button if you like anything at all, anything at all. And by the way, if you want me to cover some content uh, on another topic, or if you have a content uh, that you care about, if I know anything about it at all, I'll talk to you about it too. Uh, there are people that have not commented, and I'd love to know where you're watching from. You can give any name you want, you know. I don't know if the people that say what they are are really the people that say what they are. How would I know? You know, three severed heads may not be a serial killer for all I know. Janet Williams says, on my job, I listen to um, voices with headphones on eight, eight hours a day, five days a week for 16 years. I'm also very observant of gestures and habits. I watch Bob Joyce and smile, uh, smile. Rob says, Mr. Summercraft, I'm on the fence. We'll get off there because, you know, it can be, you know, if you if, if you're not careful, you could get really 
they'll use the word pricked. I love it if Bob was Elvis. Nothing bad is said about either Elvis or Joe. Um, three severed heads is enjoying the attention, I can see. Uh, he's not the only one. Uh, Jack, have you seen the movie 2000 Mules? No, I have not seen the movie 2000 Mules. Tell me a, a brief synopsis. Uh, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't know. I don't know if I want to go that deep, uh, Anthony. First of all, you know, <laughs> I, I don't, I, you have a channel, right? So there, you want to do your stuff on your channel, you know? Um, it all comes down to what the reaction to you is on this channel. You know, what reaction do I get? I'm not out to, uh, give you a hard time. I hope you're not out to give me a hard time. Um, I want to hear from pastor Bob Joyce, you know, <laughs> um, and that ain't going to happen, but I have heard from people in the inner circle. I have to be careful here. I have heard from people in the inner circle. One or two of them appreciate me. Can you imagine that? One or two of them appreciate me. I was very surprised. Very surprised. Um, well, hello, M. Silva from the great Lone Star State. You did make it. And I'm so happy. I'm so happy. Um, Michael Hoover as well. How is everyone? Good evening, everybody. Where are you from again, Michael? I forget, you know, I've got a short-term memory deal going on here. Um, but if you want to know what happened in, uh, 1964, I can vividly tell you that. Yeah. Yeah, where have you been, Three Severed Heads? I hope you haven't been doing naughty things, you know, in rooms filled with plastic like Dexter. They're going to do a prequel, right? Have you heard that? Um, I'm wondering if Anthony uh, M uh, Michael C. Hall will, um, will be any part of that. I mean, they could work it in if they were really clever, as they do, you know, what he'll become in the future and what have you. Michael still looks kind of young, too, so they might be able to do that. But to me, uh, it was the biggest uh, reboot that Showtime ever had. And then his son kills him off. I'm talking about Dexter New Blood. I, I don't know. What is it that we like about serial killer uh, stories? You know, Forensic Files is huge still. And, you know, uh, Peter Thomas, the original announcer who does such a wonderful job, has been dead for a number of years now. But it's still going strong. We just love those kind of stories, right? I understand there are Elvis protectors, like you said, Jack. Patty with an eye. Uh, yeah, sure. I, I, I believe that's true. Some appointed, but mostly self-appointed. Mostly self-appointed. But that doesn't mean there aren't some that are appointed to do that. And remember, I'm just speaking of possibilities, you know. So, you know, you're, you're, you're welcome to say I'm wrong. You're welcome to say I'm crazy. But then again... It just might be a lunatic you're looking for. You know, crazy people call other people crazy people. Do you know that part? You know, so I, uh, I'm i not here to um, disrespect and what have you. I, uh, I know when something can develop into uh, uh, something that... Um, would take a lot of energy. I have an email address, Jack, the fair guy, F A I R Jack, the fair guy at gmail.com. You can email me your thoughts. Um, I may not have much to say back, you know, because, um, the last thing you want to do is get into, um, a, uh, draining back and forth thing, you know, uh, but I, I certainly will listen to what you have to say. And, and I think that's a good forum for that. You know, uh, my mind is not closed. You know, this is, as I say, even if we're wrong about the whole thing, it's still an incredible story. You know, I got into the daily star in, uh, I know it's a rag type paper. I understand it's the, what was that paper? The, uh, the, uh, lower than the Inquirer and the Star, the uh, the one that had alien babies invade Cincinnati. 
the World Weekly, or what the heck was that called? Uh, yeah, they had why, especially you know, it's funny in the '60s and '70s there were stories um, in these magazines that our parents would read. Holy heck, they were stories about uh, uh, moms molesting boys and stuff like that. I saw when I was like, I don't know, pretty young. I think this was when I was living in Montreal. I saw one or two of these books. And I guess I'm I'm, I'm kind of inferring that my mom would have been the one who bought them. <laughs> but there were like these true detective things and what have you. And they could be real edgy. Real edgy for the mind of a seven-year-old. Never expected the globe. <sighs> I don't know. I remember the globe, yeah. Could be. It's the sun something? I can't remember now. The sun, possibly, Jack. Ted Richards says that. We're on to something with the sun, I guess. Here comes the sun, and don't let your kids read it. <laughs> I thought that was pretty good, Anthony. Come on, give me a break. Um, but I will, I will certainly, you know, it's uh, e email is a nice way to put your thoughts down in a cohesive way that, is not going by in real time. And, uh, um, J W Miller, I think you've been with us once or twice before. Good evening, Jack. And all your uh, viewers, this is, uh, wheelchair bound, uh, from Denton, Texas, Denton, Texas. It rained all day. And I thank God that I didn't have water coming in the back door. Just one of his many blessings. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Judy White. Well, the Inquirer is, uh, but there was uh, there was that one. I think it was sometimes in black and white. Uh, was in black and white in the '60s for sure. Uh, that was you know all this weird stories, you know, about alien babies and uh, stuff like that. Hi, Jack and everyone. My husband and I have been watching and reading the chat. Doris from Benton, Kentucky. Vito, my hair guy, is here, the owner of Classy, get it right, Cuts, the man responsible for what little hair I have left, and uh, he doesn't do the coloring, though, uh, and I certainly need to. <laughs> oh, boy, you're never so macho when you've got hair color on your hair and scotch tape around your temples so that you, uh, so, so you get that uh, white temples look. Uh, I feel so macho at that point. <laughs> What are you saying, Elizabeth Gilbert? Hey, Denton, Texas. So she's saying, uh, welcome to Denton, Texas. I'm not far from you. Rained here, too. Raining in uh, Texas? My goodness. I thought that was just once a year, like California. David uh, uh, Staten is here. Candy Staten Suswell relative. Remember Candy Staten? Uh, she was on the Trinity Broadcasting uh, Network. Good to hear you and saw a photo of Bob with Charlie Ward. Sure, sure. It shocked it shocked us. But no matter what comes out, there's going to be an explanation, you know. Uh, there's going to be an explanation. Um, Lana is here as well. And uh, welcome, Vito, my hair guy. You can go to uh, his channel and hear him sing Elvis. He's got lots of Elvis covers. Vito Yazo, Y-O-Z-Z-O. And, um, I see Vito about every seven, eight weeks, I guess. And, uh, when it's just getting too long and, uh, he, uh, he cuts my hair and, uh, his, um, his employee, Sherry cuts Karen's hair. His uh, wife uh, works there as well. Marianne Rossi, not Donna Rossi. So go to Vito Yazo, Y-O-Z-Z-O. And listen to Vito's songs. And don't forget to hit the subscribe and like button when you're there. How are you, Marianne Rossi? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, I'm a huge Elvis fan, so appreciate new releases. <laughs> yeah, you, you might get one. <laughs> you might get one. <laughs> That's all I'll say about that. Um, but... Um, does anyone know why uh, Pastor Bob has changed his video uploads to Thomas Joyce? Um, I think it's just a matter of uh, the person who was uploading the music services uh, 
somebody named Randy, I believe, was not available, and Thomas Joyce stepped up. He just stepped up. Yeah. Um, that's another person that people talk about, uh, Thomas Joyce. Um, you're welcome, Vito. You're welcome. Um, I shouldn't say this, but a mysterious tape has shown up of Elvis. That was his last concert. It's an actual soundboarding, soundboard recording. Huh. I have not heard about that. Um, yeah, there's a lot of early Elvis stuff out there, you know, reasons why there was the Phil Aitchison report that we talked about. I can't find that whole report anymore. And, you know, some of the earliest videos I did, which talked more about Phil Aitchison, um, I lost a lot of my files. Uh, I don't have those. For some reason, I took them down. And then, because uh, I felt we were doing better stuff, I had better recording equipment, that kind of thing. And, um, but the Phil Aitchison report was quite extensive talked about uh, a lot of details and of course Jeannie C. Riley said from the stage, I've seen the tape that Elvis is very much alive uh, and I, uh, I know people that talk to him all the time we know that Priscilla said on Oprah Winfrey that uh, Elvis said this just the other day and then oh my goodness she caught herself you know uh, we have Priscilla doing an Elvis special from Graceland. So welcome to the home of the living legend. You see, Priscilla, that indicates he's alive. You meant to say of uh you 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 meant to say of one of the legends uh the, of uh rock and roll, of the legend of rock and roll. But you said living legend, which indicates that he still had a pulse when you said that. What would he be today? He'd be a preacher. Yeah, of course. Of course. Um, also, I went back and forth with someone that was uh, talking about uh, Larry. Um, <laughs> what's his name? The hairstylist. Don't forget the last name, Jack. These things scare me. Uh, Geller, right? And uh, see, my theory... I don't know how Anthony would feel about this. Well, I know how he would feel about it. I just answered my own question because he believes Elvis. He says Elvis is, is passed away in 77. Um, if Elvis should have lived longer than that, I'm not sure that the Elvis who recorded gospel albums was born again. Um, many people record gospel albums. Wayne Newton didn't want I don't, I don't know Wayne's spiritual status and I don't know Elvis's only God knows when someone accepts him with their heart. But I know that I was into Hinduism and chasing gurus prior to my conversion in 1984 as a born again Christian. Right. Uh, and my friends were into it. They kind of got me into it. Ram Das and, Paramahansa Yogananda and uh, but Ram Das was like the guy for me. He was the guy for me. But once I accepted Jesus in 1984, um, I had no appetite for that anymore. I knew that that would not blend with uh, my newfound Christianity, and uh, so that was the end of it. So if Elvis had been born again when he met Larry Geller, who became like his uh, guru advisor as he did his hair and what have you, uh, he would have been telling him right and left. And it doesn't indicate that this was the truth, that what Larry was selling just didn't mix with Christianity. And he wanted no part of it. He wanted no part of it. He would be at least arguing the faith with him. That's how that would go. That's how that would go. So what if uh, 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 Elvis... Uh, was born again much later and then at, at some point god gave him a mission gave him a vision your old man will dream dreams right old man will dream dreams and he he used that when he talked to spa guy uh what if uh he gave him the vision uh to to do what 
uh, Elvis was always had a heart to do in the back of his mind, which was to preach the gospel, you know, at some point. Um, so I don't know. This All the stuff I'm saying here and really all the stuff anybody else will say is unprovable. It's unprovable. Um, Priscilla said that she uh, was pretty sure that if Elvis were alive today, this is when she was being careful, he would probably be a preacher. Um, it's just kind of a natural thing, you know, I think that when you're, there's a certain amount of performance in preaching, and he would also get to sing as a preacher. And uh, uh, the older you get, you realize you have more days behind you than you do in front of you. So I could easily see because uh, he always had a uh, curiosity and a hunger for God. So once he accepted Jesus Christ as his personal Lord and Savior, it would be as natural as liking butter to for him to go on to uh, to uh, preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. He knew he'd be good at it, and he he is. Jesus is the way and the truth and the life, says Vito. That's true. And what Vito is trying to tell us is that's far more important than any of this Elvis stuff. And I can't, I can't disagree with that at all. I can't disagree with that at all. One thing for sure about Bob Joyce is he is uh, uh, bringing people to Christ. I don't always know what that means because I always feel that there's only a small segment of Christians that are actually walking their talk. And I've always been uh, pretty honest about my uh, uh, my struggles. You know, my lack of. Uh, walking the talk as I should, you know, even in these times, how can you not? Bobby George Klein was the best friend to Elvis. Well, supposedly that's what we, we learned that Elvis referred to George Klein as his best friend and uh, called him down to the Cadillac uh, dealership. Uh, he said, can you come on down uh, here, uh, George? I want to talk to you. And he said, yeah, 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 I can do that. I'll be right down. And when he came into the showroom, he handed him the keys to, I believe, a yellow Cadillac with a white interior. And he says, that's for you, buddy. That's for you. I believe that was in the Albert Goldman book. And I know you don't like Albert Goldman, uh, Anthony. I'm sure you don't. Uh, what are you saying, Randy? Much of the video coverage available two years ago has been taken down in recent months, Jack. Uh-huh. Yeah. Maybe I'll be next, right? <laughs> Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Part of me wants to, you know, to be honest with you. Uh, now, if something major happened, uh, that would be different. Um, but I don't want to keep hammering this. I really don't. Uh, I have tried to move on from the topic. I really have. Um, without, uh, you know, uh, committing channel suicide. But uh, there are a few options available to me. Um, there's enough people covering politics. There's enough people uh, like Mike Winger doing a wonderful job covering Christian topics and what have you. I just dropped my uh, cap to my water. And uh, so, you know, there's not a whole lot that uh, I can do. Not, not a whole lot that I can do to maintain an audience. I'd like to think if I came on and did these live shows and never mentioned Bob Joyce that we'd get a good amount of people, but it doesn't look that way. I think it would drop under 50 pretty quick, uh, pretty quick, you know. And, um, you know, so here's this couple making these fatty desserts, retired teachers, and they're getting, <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> Close to a half million views sometimes. Nice retirement income. Uh, I need to have a supplement to my retirement income. What do I want to do? What I've been doing since 1977. Use my uh, radio talents to bring them to YouTube. But I have this Bob Joyce topic, and everybody thinks that I just, you know, this is all I want to do. Well, it's not all I want to do, you know. Um, but I, I, you just have to look through the views when I do other topics and you see my, my dilemma that I'm in, I'm in a dilemma with minimal editing skills as well. Elvis was said he wanted to be a preacher when he was younger in grade school. Uh, he did attend uh, church with his mother and also in high school with his girlfriend, Dixie. Yeah, absolutely. 
uh, when someone gives their heart to Christ, it's between them and God, you know. Uh, I don't have any idea when Elvis did that. Jack, we all know you're not a one-trick pony. Well, I'm a kind of one-and-a-half-trick pony, Ted, <laughs> from Vermont, the land of maple syrup. There's not much flavor to this maple syrup. How come if I get maple fudge, it tastes all maple-y, but if I have maple syrup on my my waffles or something, it doesn't taste as good as Log Cabin. I don't know. I'm just being honest. What do you think, Stefan? Um what are you saying, Rhonda? Because uh, Andra, Andra Andra likes it. Uh, Elvis was said he wanted to be a pretty, yeah, right. Okay, I already said that. Uh, yes, we can be with someone and not be close. That's true. Start singing. Well, I can't do that because then I'll, then I'll definitely lose people. 134 watching right now. Please hit the subscribe and like button. Not getting enough likes tonight. So if you happen to like anything you've heard, please take time now to hit that like button. Sometimes we have the numbers. We, a few times what's happened is the, the number for, uh, for those watching and the number of likes is identical for a little while. And I just think that's the coolest thing. That's the coolest thing. What do you think, Neo? Neo sings well. Um, it's always hard for me to get music on, you know. If I try it in real time, like if I go to Spotify, I could start playing songs right now. I could go and play any number of songs, you know, especially on Spotify. I could do it. But they would take it out in real time, in real time. So I can't do that. Now, if I do it pre-recorded, uh, like I did, he's alive. You know, here's the funny thing about that the Easter show with Don Francisco. I had a request for he's alive. And I thought, I love that song. I used to play it when I worked in an 11 station, 14 station Christian network. I, of course I know that song. So I figured, well, I'll give it a go and see if YouTube will allow it. And they did and said, uh, you, you need to share the profits on this. Wonderful. Let Don Francisco have his cut or whoever owns that song. Absolutely. I don't care if you said I can't, if I, I, I can't make 10 cents on it. That's fine. I'm not going to make much more than 10 cents either. And neither are they, by the way, it's not going to get, you know, it's not going to get 149,000 views, but uh, I was so thrilled to be able to play that song. See? Uh, so sometimes they will do that, but not always. I'll just get noticed that it's copyright protected and, and you can't load it. You know, that's just the way. Kathleen is here. Kathleen Whataburger, she must be, because someone just said hello to her. There she is. Let's. Oh, you're late to the party. Yeah. Late to the dance. Oh, well, you're welcome here. And those of you that watch in the replay, welcome to you. Please hit the subscribe and like button as well. We've got a few more likes there. And 138, peach in, uh, 138 people watching that I know of. Craig Oliver, I hit the like button as well. Well, you're a fine American, even though you're from uh, Guatemala, you know. Um, thank you so much. <laughs> the people that bought our uh, local Greek diner are from Guatemala. <laughs> Food's pretty good. I know there's a few things I don't like, um, but for the most part, pretty good. She already hit that button, M. Silver, in the Lone Star state of Texas. So, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, Brenda never really leaves. Don't let her fool you. Don't let her fool you. <laughs> um, Anastasia, or Anastasia, as you like to be called. She hit the like button. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Here's someone new. I thought the first word was gnat for a moment. <laughs> like gnats that bother you in the summertime. But I don't think you're here to bother us. Are you? Did you ever hear of the go-go guy? No, I've heard of the go-go's. His name was James Breedwell. He recorded some of his originals on YouTube from Tennessee. Huh. So I can still find him there. Marianne Rossi, YouTube Bob Joyce. Uh, YouTube Bob Joyce, best your 
so informative and you're keeping it alive. And and it brings people to hear Pastor Bob Joyce preach the gospel, you know. Uh, there is that from the Elvis programmers. I shared a song, but it wouldn't go on your site. Um, you mean uh, you shared the link? Right? You can't, I don't think you can put a, 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 a song up on my site. Uh, if you mean in the live stream, they always take out music um, in real time. But um, what you're doing is sharing a link, so I'm not sure. No one's ever answered that. How many of you know Elvis? I never saw him in concert once, uh, Bobby Anthony. Bobby Anthony. <laughs> um, never did. Um, I've talked to people that know him, though. I talked to people that did, um, but mostly people that know Bob Joyce, to be honest with you. Mostly that. Um, yeah. But um, Three Severed Heads is like doing the work of Bob 1974 this week. Uh, I think Bob has given up on us. Watch, he'll show up now that I said that. He won't be able to stop himself, and then we'll have uh, we'll have a, a brawl again. But I'm not in that brawl. I want you to know I respect Bobby Anthony Esposito's opinions. Uh, check his videos out. I haven't... Uh, I don't know, Bobby. It just says Anthony Esposito on your channel. Is that is that what it says? It doesn't say Bobby. I got to I got to find your stuff. I haven't found it yet. It's most definitely does mean something. Well, I wouldn't argue with you if you know the king of rock and roll. Um but you know, what we're saying of course is that um anyone who uh loved Elvis, if Elvis came to them at one point, would it be your dad? or uh, yourself, and said, well, at this point it would be your dad, and he said, this is what I'm going to do, this is what I'm planning to do, and I need you to uh, I need you to support me in this, and this is what I want you to say. Um, I think the people that loved Elvis that would understand uh, what he was doing um, would, uh, would do exactly what he wanted, exactly what he wanted. They loved him that much, you know, and um, there was a, all kinds of, uh, there was safety concerns, there was health concerns, because if he didn't die in 77, he wasn't far from it, et cetera, et cetera, you know. Well, Carol Lynn is here. How old are you, Bobby? Okay. <laughs> and uh, seen him live on TV in the 70s. Well, yeah. I remember sitting down there on Wisner Avenue watching the Live from Hawaii special at Rosie Cortez's house with the, uh, uh, with my mom and the Candidos, and they're all gone now. They're all gone. I was like, uh, what was I? I was young. I was young, and we saw on Rosie's Color TV, we saw Elvis Live from Hawaii. So, um... What about Ann Margaret? What about Ann Margaret? Ann Margaret, the love of Elvis's life. So I don't know, Vito, you know. Um, you know, once you're monetized, there's like a different set of rules, I think, and uh, what they will allow and what they won't allow. Uh, there is a spot for me to put music licenses. Uh, you know, to, to verify that I'm able to play this. But even then it becomes a problem because that's only good for like three countries. And they're good countries, one of them being the United States. But you won't be, they won't hear you in Portugal. They'll have to block it and, and what have you. They'll have to block it in South Africa, for example. And we have people that watch in South Africa. I just wish it wasn't so because you know, like if I'm playing music off of Spotify, if you get all the way to the point where you have loaded your music onto Spotify, every time I hit it, you're getting your very small cut, 
you know, you have to get a million hits before you're going to make money off of Spotify, you know, like the psychedelic furs that we love so much, you know. Um, and uh, our favorite topic is on the table. Yeah, you know, as I say, I would love to talk about other things. I would love to talk about other things. And uh, when people bring up other things, I'm always happy. Uh, hi, uh, Paul Comfort. I always want to say Comerford, Comerford, because I knew a Steve, Stephen Comerford. Um, but you're uh, Paul, and you are from Wales, correct? Or I lost my mind completely, Paul. You give me the the murials of Tom Jones, right? Under the overpass or over the underpass. No, it's under the overpass. <laughs> um, so, well, you know, Anthony, if you come on here, you're going to, you know, you're going to get that kind of response. Um, uh, and I hope you're good natured about it. <laughs> I have to come on your show and do a live feed. Yeah, but even then, I don't think they would allow the music part, you know. Um, and, uh, you know, we could obviously Zoom it. Um, you probably do Zoom, right, Vito? Um, I have not done my first Zoom yet. You know, I see people like yourself all the time that I would love to have on. Uh, now, you, you sing Elvis songs often, not always. You sing many other people, too. Um, but um, would love to, I think we ran Richard Lyon away. Did you run away, Richard? I think Richard said, uh, not, not my cup of tea tonight. Um, but I see people all the time. There's a, a teacher that um, Karen knows, uh, Mr. Clark. And my goodness, every Wednesday we go to do laundry, and every Wednesday here comes Mr. Clark going to the supermarket, you know. And uh, I know this guy has a wealth of knowledge and um, love to have him uh, on, you know. But this is not the place for that. <laughs> this place, my bedroom, you know. It's it's not the place. I don't have the proper facility. Um. That's an interesting question, Patty. Where is Ryan's Bar 3? Oh, three days ago. Where is Ryan's Bar? Sometimes you get comments you never expect. Um, but I, I do want to do those things, you know. I, if I had someone like Mr. Clark on, there's a guy who has uh, interesting things to say. And I see people like that a lot. But I don't know, you know, if I do the, if I do the zoom and all that. And then he sees he's got 122 views, you know? Um, yeah. Ryan's bar. <laughs> I don't know. Um, William Brown, downtown uh, William Brown. All right. Uptown William Brown. Hi, Jack from Nacogdoches, Texas. Hello, hello, hello. Um, what state are you in Jack? A state of confusion. I'm in the empire state. I'm in the Empire State because uh, Karen's son needs the benefits, you know. I want to uh, join Richard in Florida, but it's so expensive down there, isn't it? Um, yeah, I love Billy Joel. He uh, well, he just taped his uh, last Madison Square Garden show. Um I don't think that means he won't tour in other places, though, including in the tri-state area. He'll just go to the Prudential Center in six months or something, you know. I don't think he's uh, he's giving it up. Um, but, um, you know, he knows his best days are behind him as well. I'm hoping for a full album, you know, turn the lights back on. Great song. Give us some more, Billy. You can't stop there. You got to have a full album. Um What's your biggest regret, Marianne Rossi? I once was offered four front row tickets at the garden for my friend who worked in the ticket office at um, four p.m. 
for Elvis, and I was told I couldn't leave. Uh, I couldn't leave work early. Oh boy, oh boy, yeah, that's that. That'd be a lifetime regret. Like when uh, a young woman with the uh, face of an angel brought me hot bagels at three o'clock in the morning when I was uh, all night rock and roll DJ and uh, wasted opportunity there. Wasted opportunity. But, you know, they come because you're the guy on the radio. And I had my permed afro then, you know, I looked all right. Uh, and I decided not to uh, take advantage of the situation beyond a little kiss, you know, that kind of thing. Oh, dear. The ones that got away. Don't you know, Anthony, those ones that got away, you'll think about it for the rest of your life. Um, so what's up with you, William Brown? What's going on in Nacogdoches, Texas? What is Nacogdoches, Texas known for? Jack, great seeing you again. Got a dash. You're doing DoorDash tonight? Really? Huh. Got something to do. I understand. Thank you, Three Severed Heads, for stopping by. Rob says, that's uh, Mr. Summercraft, I had a uh, cassette of Elvis in Memphis at the uh, Mid-South Coliseum. I played it every time. I drove for seven years. I know it uh, song by song. Hey, Paul, what are you saying now? Uh, Elvis, uh, never outside the USA, except when he was uh, in the service, right, in Germany. He did a uh, little concerts for the uh, soldiers he did at some point not in the beginning but eventually he did and uh, that was because of course uh, colonel parker did not have a passport did not have a passport so um yeah i mean the live shows are um are uh, are the other my other go-to but we're obviously often putting Bob in the title. I would like to think if I don't put Bob in the title and we talk about other stuff, that um, that we would get an audience. And that brings us to a new feature, uh, which I'm doing an hour and a half in, which is Nincompoop of the Week. Nincompoop of the Week. There certainly could be a lot of candidates here. And Chuck Schumer would certainly probably be a leading candidate for first runner-up. And then, um, then uh, we could have uh, Mayorkas himself in the second position. Um, someone will not, who will not admit to that his mission all along is, has been to let just about everyone in that wanted to come in. And uh, he, has, uh, he has broken the law and not fulfilled his oath and all that. And then the president himself. But uh, the one that came to mind because he is, um, you know, you're a special Nick and Poop when you don't realize what a jerk you are. And Joe Scarborough from MSNBC uh, fits that description to a T. Uh, former Republican, but obviously he must have been a, um, a rhino Republican um, because he, uh, he holds dear. I think Leon may be watching. Are you watching, Leon? Because why would your name come up? My friend, Leon. Oh, boy. Okay. We're talking about nincompoop of the week here. And uh, Joe Scarborough is everything and more. You know, this is a guy who should know better. He claimed to be a Republican like Nicole Wallace. They're watching the destruction of our country, and they are an apologist as it goes down in flames, as these people seek to take a pee on the con uh, the Constitution. And all he has to do is try to build up uh, Joe Biden during this time. So there he is uh, scolding people that are uh, President Trump supporters saying, oh, what is it? Your people's rap is all you have to say is that the, pr the, the that, that America sucks. No, 
Lane Brain. We're not saying America sucks. We're saying that we love this country so much that we don't like the likes of you and your new wife, Mika, trying to destroy it. You used to kiss Donald Trump's buttski over and over again. You were friends with him. I think she was too. She was too. You've been to Trump Tower. You've hobdob. You've kissed butt when you needed to. And all of a sudden, he's the Antichrist and a man who doesn't even know where he is, who is nose diving the country you claim to love. You're all for him. We want four more years of that, which means we want President Kamala Harris. Are you kidding? Are you kidding? So you you want to scold us for trying to hold on when you see right in the city that you broadcast from, you see a return to uh, Jew hating like it was 1966 in the Deep South. They've been delivered from that. They've been delivered. But now our college students are screaming, calling for the death of their fellow Jewish students. We see all kinds of chaos in New York City, looting, stores having to close. We see violent crime from the subways to the streets, all in the three-year reign of Joe Biden. And, of course, we have to bring in Kathy Hochul and, yes, D.A. Bragg. You see all this and you try to put lipstick on a pig like that? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? So after he gives this big speech, like he's Mr. Elite, like, you know, he's got a minuscule audience to begin with, you know, it's hard to get an audience in the morning. People are too busy to really focus on what you're doing. It's the worst time. It's the worst time. The morning uh, people of, of intellect are often not even out of bed or if they are, they're working, you know, mom is getting the kids ready, uh, whatever. And uh, But then the next day, because he sees what it's like when Trump walks into Chick-fil-A and when he walks into, uh, when he's on the streets of Harlem and, oh, he's getting concerned because all the black people love him in Harlem. Trump, 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 Trump. He's, he's such a star. And he says, well, I do have to say, I do have to say that uh, I see what's happening there. And, and, you know, this is, this could be bad for us. This could be bad for us. This is uh, something, you know, that 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 could be a real factor, this Trump adoration. If we can't survive four more years of Biden, Joe Scarborough, we cannot survive uh, everything from uh, $35 trillion in debt, uh, the, the stock market, the, uh, the, the crime wave, the fact that there's no consequences to crime, so citizens are being killed in the streets, bodegas being robbed two, three times a week in places uh, in New York and in uh, Seattle and Chicago. You've let, Joe, your candidate has let 9 million people, we don't know who the hell they are, into the country instead of legal immigration, which is the right way to do it. We have enemies of our country right here now, including people from China and Venezuela and what have you, badasses, some of them, and some great people just looking for a better life. I get it. Legal immigration, but you can't let whole countries move over here. So in three years, anybody with any kind of a brain, Joe Scarbo, would see that this man has tanked the country in so many ways. And the people that are trying to defend it and stop the bleeding, the Trump people, because that's the other choice that we have. It ain't going to be RFK Jr. He's going to take some votes away. He's going to take some votes away. Um those people love this country, and they, they've they been around long enough, and so have you, to know that this country has turned into a sick, hateful, uh, there are plenty of good, fine Americans, and there's the heartland, thank God, uh, but there, there are people now, this, this, uh, Everything you said about the Republicans and them being the racist and what have you, as I've said a million times, those who scream racist, racist, racist are the real racist. I'm not saying everything not Netanyahu did, every decision he made. I'm so sorry that innocent lives were lost in Gaza. 
But the horrific thing that happened on October 7th set all that in motion. It would have never happened. And if President Trump had won another term, not only would that have never happened, the whole war in Ukraine would never have happened. So now, so now, I'm looking at the count. It's down a little bit. Some people care that the world's on fire. Um, um, so now, besides the economy being in, in terrible shape, no matter how they try to spin it, um, we have, um, we have, uh, we're a joke. World War III has never been closer than it is now. Um, Biden does not know what he's doing. And um, we have uh, racism. We have, uh, the, oh, they talked about the Proud Boys and what have you. Look at what's happening down in front of uh, Columbia University right now. What they are saying. They're calling for all Jews to be annihilated. All Jews. The, the, the Jewish students are saying, we have to, uh, until this is worked out, which will probably be never, uh, we have to, uh, especially if, if we go along the progressive route, uh, we have to uh, uh, be able to study remotely or, or not. They, the best thing to do is to sue the college for your money back, except the fact that Columbia University now has been taken over by the progressives. They have destroyed the university. Uh, it's going to be really hard to get it back. Um, if you don't deport the people who are terrorists, they're yelling death to America. If you let them stay in this country instead of sending them to where, you know, where their beliefs, the people that uh, they are embracing, the theology that they are embracing is practiced, um, then there's just going to be more chaos, more murder, et cetera, et cetera. So Joe Scarborough from Morning Joe, nincompoop of the week, our first one, the nincompoop of the week. All right. Harris is um, is not capable of pulling strings. It would be uh, it would be people like. Um, um, well, let's see who would be the best example of people behind Joe Biden. I'm sure Kareem has her voice, but she's she's a she's a dingbat. Um, uh, amazingly, Kamala has shown herself to be. Oh yeah, she's made her points. If you mean that, and she's gotten some points across. This is this is the vice president of the United States that said that uh, she fully supported BLM and it's not going to stop. They were burning black businesses down, burning uh, police stations down, uh, uh, terror, uh, terrorizing senior citizens that were just trying to have a meal in a cafe. Kamala Harris for the, the BLM movement, for it. And um, it was just a summer of riots a summer of uh, terror that went on when we were already stressed over COVID and um, horrible. Hi, Keith Bolton. That's all the politics I'm going to do. I'm done. I'm not even going to comment uh, because uh, I know there are people that don't like it. There you go, down to 99. This is the problem I have, uh, Anthony. Um, they don't want to talk about politics, you know. Barack is pulling some strings. Well, that's true, Craig. You're absolutely right. That's a very good example. And I, you know, I didn't used to feel uh, this way about uh, uh, Barry, <laughs> about uh, Barack Hussein, <laughs> Barack Obama. You know, I, I wanted, I was willing to give him a chance when he got in. You know, I thought uh, it was cool that someone of color, uh, he's not black, he's, uh, his, you know, his, uh, his mother was white as the driven snow. You know, he's mulatto, whatever. Um, but uh, I thought he had some good traits. And, and, and then Joe Biden started working on him and got him to back down from some of the things he both said he believed in Joe Biden. Oh, dear. Um, Irish Army for 10 years, Jack. You were in the Irish Army? What? CID? For 10 years, Jack, tell me what's so great about this country. Um, this country or county? <laughs> no, it's country. Um, uh, 
I think that um, comparatively speaking, uh, we have seen some wonderful men and women that have come forth in this country. Uh, we have seen definite uh, advancement in terms of coming against racism. Now Joe Biden is destroying all of that and reverting us back to a sad time. Um, we have had uh, soldiers that have bled and died for this country. Um, you look at an organization like Tunnel for Towers and you see the very best in America. Um, great health care system, uh, which I think should be available to everybody, by the way. I would agree with Hillary Clinton on that. Everybody should have access to health care. Um, we see just... Um, over the years, over the generations, some wonderful, brave men and women. Uh, and we see uh, a country that has uh, brought the very best entertainment, including the greatest of all time, Elvis Presley, and welcome the Beatles in from uh, part of the British invasion and welcome them in here. And that we have, uh, have a better record of rights. Every country has its sins, but when you compare... Uh, North Korea to the United States of America, I think you see clearly uh, that uh, we are much better than them. And uh, so many countries uh, put uh, put strong uh, um, sanctions on the liberties of their people. This is the land of the free and the home of the brave, but it's becoming less so as the people like the squad envelop America. So... Uh, that's all I can say. And Carmen asks uh, on a lighter note, yeah, let's. I'm, I'm, I'm going to stop because um, that's a road to nowhere. What is Elvis Presley's best movie, anyone? It'll have to be someone other than me because um, I'm not an Elvis movie person. Um, Hearts Wild, you weren't here before, and now you are. Hi, Hearts Wild. I'm glad you... Uh, did finally make it. We're back to 108 because I'm stopping talking about politics. Uh, we certainly need to take care of our veterans. God bless them. We really, really do. Um, we'll take care of someone who came to the country illegally, but the veterans uh, are often in, in, in bad uh, straits, you know. Um, people, the homeless uh, situation and all that. I was here earlier, Jack. I know you were, and now you're back. I appreciate that. I love my country more, more uh, the way it used to be. So that's what we're trying with Trump. We're trying to um, <clears throat> kind of stop the bleeding. We know, us senior citizens know that the good book tells us that uh, bad times are coming. And um, it's uh, not something you can change or stop. But we're hoping for um, we're hoping for another wave of uh, goodness. Donald Trump may be a very flawed man, but he loves this country. And uh, look what he's had to put up with. Hi, Mark D. Traver. Where are you from? Where are you watching from tonight? Um, one love forever. It's terrible. It really is. It's sad, you know. Uh, but that doesn't mean we have to be sad every day. We can uh, get up praising God and uh, do the best we can. And this is a year where there may you may be called on to do something special. Uh, do it carefully, though, because the people that uh, want to destroy this country will um, will come against you with everything they got. You know, Redneck Ways, a movie needs to be made about everything that has happened since 2016. Never would have expected it. Huh. Oh, there's some good movies that can come out of the uh, the stories, whether you're talking about entertainment or whether you're talking about the Trump story. Who's going to play Trump, huh? Who are we going to get to play Trump? I've never thought about that. Um, yeah, I've never, I've never given that any consideration. Yeah, that's what people want, Ted. They want the country back the way it was, where you could walk down the street and not worrying about being a sucker punched by someone that will totally get away with it, um, come in and steal everything in the store of value, 
and uh, no consequences. I can't believe this. When you tell people that there's no consequences, they will destroy your country right before your eyes. Right before your eyes. Mark is a Trump man, I do believe. Can you believe, though, um, this is just a side thought, Bobby uh, Kennedy Jr.'s sister and the, the rest of the Kennedys getting up and endorsing Biden? I would have. I would not have been as gracious as he has been. I would not have been as gracious. I would have said, it's your right to do whatever you want, but don't think that my father would approve of the things that are going on in America in 2024. He would not. He would not. Ah. So um, that's the story, Dory. 118 watching right now. Um, hard for me. He's my friend. I talked to him. Is that your story and you're sticking to it, Mark? How do you know Mr. Trump? How do you know President Trump? The world is certainly a mess right now. I never thought I'd see it like this. That's uh, Anthony. I mean, really, you know, um, God doesn't care about any of this garbage, which, you know, about the, the country that, that is part of his creation. I don't know. I don't know. Um, D. Plunkett, I live five miles from Bob Joyce and his church. Well, that's cool. So you've been to the church, D. Have you? Have you? Have you? Have you? Hi, Jack. You never ended your uh, worldwide ramblings. It just stopped. I hope you're not talking about now. Do we have a freeze situation, everybody? Are we okay? I would say that Jesus is vexed. He's vexed at what he sees. I wish that uh, his righteous anger would come forth. But then when I say something like that, I realize I need the grace of God so much in my life. I need forgiveness and what have you. But uh, I would like to see everything's okay, says Anastasia. I think that's the way you like it said. Good, Elizabeth Gilbert, you're still with us. And um, terrific. Yeah, watch the replay. Hello, replay uh, crowd. Please hit the uh, subscribe and the like button. Hit the notification bell so you know when we come on. Um. It's all written in the good book that we're going to have terrible times. So um, just looking for uh, some semblance of uh, um, normalcy to return, whatever normalcy means, right? See Gary Puckett behind me and the great, late, great Rush Limbaugh. And... Uh, Karen when she was 19 in Germany and our worldwide ramblings logo. Yeah. <laughs> You're named after your great grandmother. That's how her name was pronounced. Anastasia. Yeah. Well, it's, it's nice. No matter which of the three ways you say it, Anastasia, <laughs> uh, Anastasia, of course, became very, popular during the 50 shades of gray trilogy you know he can bring judgment he will bring judgment so we have to put our sins under the blood now would be a good time to um to watch what's coming out of our mouth and what have you i'm not as successful as i certainly should be so i can't judge anyone you know i can't judge anybody i can't do it i have no stones to throw i'm a sinner I'm a sinner, hopefully a sinner saved by grace, saved by an amazing grace that is unfathomable, unfathomable. Um, so, I'm just, uh, my Bible is, 
not near me. It's back there. I meant to bring it forward. So I'm going to use my phone for our closing scriptures. Go to the dollar, um, the dollar uh, 25, dollar tree, dollar 25 readers. John 3.16, God is, uh, God's love is a fact and he gave us his only son so that those who believe in him will have eternal life. Uh, that could be the living Bible. Romans, I think that might be what I'm looking at here on these scriptures on God's love. Romans 5, 8, God demonstrated his love for us by sending Jesus to die for our sins, even while we were still sinners. John 15, Jesus tells us to love others the way he has loved us. Psalm 86, God's love is greater than his anger. That's a great scripture, right? God's love is greater than his anger and his mercy and graciousness reign. Romans 5, God has poured his love within us and continued to flood our heart with his love through his spirit. Galatians 2.20, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith. This is how we're supposed to be living in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. 1 John 4, verses 10 and 11. Real love, in, real love isn't our love for God, but his love for us. God sent his Son to be the sacrifice by which our sins are forgiven. Dear friends, since God loved us this much, we must love each other. So that's the... That's the will of the Lord for our lives. Um, when we talk about entertainment topics, um, we do it for fun. You know, we do it for fun, but uh, it's, it's not to be a consuming thing. Praying for all to have a good week. Thank you, Cheryl Everhart. Um, so... Hallelujah, says Anastasia, Shannon, and uh, Shelly, and Kathleen, and Craig Oliver a lot. Stop by tonight. Oh, there's Becca. She's saying good night, everyone. I never heard good evening. That's how fast it can go by sometimes, you know. That's how fast uh, it goes by. Mark uh, Traver, I think you're new, so welcome. Thank you, Stefan, for uh, being with us, and uh, Karen Gagnon, and um, uh, M. Silva from the great state of Texas, D. Plunkett. I live five miles from the church. That's a good thing. And um, one love forever. So many more. Really... Uh, a blessing. Thank you very much. Hearts Wild. Yeah, you were here earlier. Thank you for that. David uh, Staten. Could be Staten, but I think it's Staten. Yeah, Staten. My candy, Staten. Rhonda Ledbetter, Ted Richards, um, Randy from North Carolina, Jeanette, and uh, Barbara Kendall. I didn't get to say much to you tonight. But you were on for a little while. Thank you. And you too, Woodsley, Summercraft, Rob, and Teresa. And, uh, you know, we lose people and then we get new people. That's what it seems like. You know, the Vito, my hair guy from Classy Cuts. Thank you, Vito. Uh, yeah, thank you, Patrick, for joining us. And uh, Tim, thank you. Um, and all the others that I may be missing, uh, I may be missing. 
very grateful for you stopping by. We still have 110 people uh, watching us on this uh, early Sunday morning, at least uh, East Coast time. If you're central, it's not yet uh, midnight. And um, um, if you're in Australia, I think it's afternoon time. Uh, thank you, for Paul Comfort, for coming on, too. I remember you, my buddy, there. And thank you, uh, everyone, for watching Worldwide Ramblings. Uh, we're about having fun here, you know. Um, the reason we ask you to be respectful is that when people aren't respectful, then I start to get the complaints and the emails. I would never go on someone else's channel and try to create friction and be nasty and what have you. Um, I have no desire to do that. Um, that's your channel. That's your baby. Uh, I know that you're trying to um, present something. And if uh, you have an audience that says things that I find repugnant or strongly disagree with, well, I'm not going to change anybody's mind by coming on your channel. So um, all I ask is that, uh, you know, you be respectful. And um, there comes a time when... Uh, If you don't honor that, if you don't all honor what are the rules of uh, YouTube to be respectful, um, then, you know, what would you do in a case like that? What would you do in a case like that? So that's a story, Dory. That's a story. Thank you for watching Worldwide Ramblings for this. Uh, again, next Saturday, I will not be uh, on the air. We may do a Friday show, for example. Um, we may do something like that. So, okay, sounds good. Big God bless you. Bye-bye, everybody.